This week, my goal is to challenge you a little bit, to push back, maybe to have you question the path you're on and the business model that you chose. I'm going to explain today why freedom matters so much for real estate agents now more than ever. What is up, guys? Welcome to episode 347 of the Massive Agent Podcast. I am your host, Dustin Brome, here in Salt Lake City, Utah, where it is thundering like a bastard in the background. But luckily, because of my fancy mic, you can't hear it. But it's sure distracting the hell out of me, so I'm going to do my best. Welcome to the show. If you are new to the show, um, my name is Dustin Brome. And see, I, I'm already distracted because of the stupid thunder. I mean, that's what happens. Anyways, we're going to be talking about why freedom matters so much for a real estate agent. And like I said in the intro, I'm going to I'm going to push back and challenge and, and shake you a little bit because I think a lot of agents have chosen a path, you've chosen a business model that works most of the time, but if you ever get into a situation like I will explain, like I'll break down for you, uh it breaks. And it causes problems and potentially catastrophic problems. And so I want you to think bigger today. I want you to think uh, bigger than, than you're currently thinking and, and give yourself permission to go after whatever it is that comes to mind, whatever it is that you're inspired to do after you hear this episode. I'm going to tell you a personal story about um, what happened to me inside my business when I lost my dad a few years ago and um, some, other, some other stories that I think will challenge the path you're on. Um, and, and I want to make this clear. If you're completely 100% okay with where you're at in business, and even after today, you're like, you know what? I'm totally comfortable on the path that I'm on. That's totally fine. I'm speaking today to the entrepreneurs. I'm speaking to those that are, who want more, that, who, who are more ambitious, that are hungry, that, uh, that want to build something so much bigger than just you. And we're going to be talking about building a business as an agent versus owning your own job. Because I believe most agents, the vast majority of agents, like probably 90% or more of agents in this industry, we own our own jobs. I know because for the first, what, uh, 10, like nine, nine years or so, I owned my own job. Now, don't get me wrong, you can make a great living owning your own job. You can make a great living as a solo agent, just doing transaction after transaction forever, where you're wearing all the hats in the business, completely fine. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint a picture of how powerful and important it is to have freedom and flexibility and longevity and uh, you know what that can mean for you in your, in your life, in your family, in your career. So I hope that this episode is, imp is impactful for you because that's my intention. Before we get started, uh, last week I, I told you how our our Ignite 24 Team Builder Summit in Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, the price for tickets is going up. Uh, we decided to extend that. So for a few more days, this this episode drops Wednesday on YouTube, Thursday on on the podcast. But up until August 17th, we're we're keeping we're extending the early bird early bird pricing uh, for another few days. So in from now until August 17th, the early bird pricing's in place. After that, the cost of the tickets is going up. So make sure that you get your ass to Salt Lake City. You come see Neil Dingra and Michael Perry, Paige Steckling, Jonathan Campbell, Matt Kane, myself, uh, probably some other surprise speakers that we haven't announced yet that I'm working on. Uh, it's going, if you are wanting to build a business of any kind in this industry, this is an event you need to be at. Even if you're not currently a team leader, even if you don't necessarily want to build a traditional sales team, there's so many, we are bringing the best team builders and business builders in the industry to Salt Lake City, October 9th and 10th. You need to be there. You may as well get the cheapest ticket you possibly can. Go to igniteslc.com and register right now. We've extended the, the cheapest pricing. Take, by the way, tickets will never be this cheap again after August 17th. So igniteslc.com, get there immediately. Um, start booking your shit before the cost of airfare goes up. All right, and before we get in, I've got to give a shout out to BAM and BAMX. So I was um, just in full transparency. So I messaged Eric Simon, the broke agent, and I was like, dude, I don't, in my podcast, I don't feel like I'm doing BAMX. Uh, 
I, I feel like I'm doing Bam X a disservice with um w- with the way I promote it, and I, I feel like it's getting stale. So I asked him. I was like, I was like, what's a like? How would you describe Bam X for anyone that wants to know? So. Every single week, this is from Eric, the, the broke agent. He says, every single week in BAMX, you get three social media templates, two video scripts, one blog post, and one email, email for you to copy and send to your people, delivered to you every single week for you to brand, customize, post, and send to your database. That's on top of the courses that drop every month and our bi-weekly BAMX trainings and masterminds in the BAMX community. No membership in real estate delivers the value like BAMX does for a fraction of the cost. Well said, and he's saying it better than I have. So if you have not yet checked out BAMX, if you want to get access to all of that, uh, go to nowbam.com, register for BAMX, and make sure at checkout you use code MASSIVE, and you'll get quite a nice discount off the annual membership. Bam, the Bam X platform and community is freaking incredible. And that's why they're one of what two sponsors that I have on the show, um, by choice, because I think what Bam and specifically Bam X has done for this industry is second to none. I stand by them, um, great partners. And I, I feel like the Bam itself is, is exactly what this industry needs right now, because they don't, they don't suffer bullshit. You're going to get the news. You're going to get the stuff that matters for growing your business. You're going to get, um, they're not going to censor stuff. There's no politically correct nonsense. They just tell it to you the way it is. So much respect to Bam. Thank you, Eric, for the, for the better wording on how I can do my, my, um, my ad spot for Bam X. Make sure you use code MASSIVE at checkout and get yourself a discount. And then keeping current matters. This is a tool you need in your tool belt. You can have a team of housing Uh, experts, housing economists in your back pocket at all times telling you, hey, here's what you need to know. Here's what you should be telling your buyers. Here's what you should be telling your sellers. If you have investor clients, here's what they need to know about what's coming up. Here's some great graphics that you can share that that, uh, easily and simply illustrates the point. Because then when someone asks a question that you would be, like if you're sitting in a, a listing presentation and they ask you like a technical economic question about this or that, like, wouldn't you like to be knowledgeable? Wouldn't you like to say, well, you know what? Our experts have said this, and then you have this to show them and you have this graph and rather than, um, you know what, I'm not really sure. And you just try to bullshit around it. You need BAM, you need BAM. You need keeping current matters in your toolbox. Go to trykcm.com slash BAM. Well, I must screw that up. Try kcm.com slash BAM right now and try KCM out for yourself and find out why all the top producers that you're gunning for, they're already using it. Let's talk right now about building a business, having f- freedom and flexibility in your real estate world. So what most agents do, okay, well, actually 100% of agents start out like this. You go study, you know, you take an online course to, you know, you study for the test, you go and you take the test. Um, hopefully you pass it by the way, I passed it my first freaking try. That's right. That's right. I passed it my first try. Um, I may have just passed it by one. I I don't know. It doesn't matter because it's just pass fail, but whether you take the test once or 17 times, once you pass the damn thing, uh, it doesn't matter. You're in now it's like, okay, cool. Now what? Uh, well, you got to go join the local association, you got to join the MLS, you got to join NAR, you got to, you know, do all the stuff and pay all the pay all the protection money. And we all start out as a solo agent, wondering, okay, where do I go from here? And so naturally, as you're learning that you're wearing all of the hats, right? You you have to service clients, if you have them right away, you have to do marketing, you have to do accounting, you have to do social media, you have to uh, you have to learn and study and, you know, get up to date on statistics and, you know, and learn homes. You have to go out and you have to do everything. And that's just, that's what it is for 100% of agents who start. The problem is most of you have never grown past that. You just, you you just got good at all of those things and then just kept doing it. And that's fine because, but please understand, you don't have a real estate business if when you take a month off, if you decide to go to on vacation for a month with your family, or maybe you got sick and you have to take a month off, if you take a month off, if everything just slows to a crawl, if no sales happen, nobody's serviced, no marketing happens, nothing, that means you don't have a business. That means you own your own job. Now, this, like I was saying in the intro, 
if you're totally okay with this, that's fine, right? I'm not trying to convince you that you must change your mind. But if you are open to, you only need to change your mind on this if what I say to you impacts you. If, if, if the stories that I tell you, um, if it gets to you, if not, if you still think you're good, great, then, you, you know, hopefully you'll listen to the rest of the episode, but if not, I get it. But those who still listening, when you own your own job, it's just that it's your own job, right? There's no scalability. There's no flexibility. I mean, you, you know, you, you go, you're like trying to schedule a vacation and Hopefully you get someone else to cover showings. You get somebody else to, you know, to let people in or maybe even to do an open house for you. Cool. But client communication offers, um, responding to offers, all, all that stuff. You're still doing when you're on vacation. Why? Because you're wearing all of the hats. You are your business. There's, there's no business. What, what you should be striving for is to have systems and people and processes so that in situations like a vacation or sickness or a death in the family or burnout, you can take a step back and homes still sell. Clients still get serviced. Clients still get followed up with and communicated with and updated. Offers still get made. Offers still get reviewed. The whole thing hums along, right? This is why one of the most important things you could do as a solo agent is to make the first hire of a transaction coordinator. When you first hire a TC, that's your first taste of building a team, building a business, right? You're taking stuff off your plate because if you're just a solo agent owning your own job, 100% of the tasks that have to be done are on your plate. 100% of them are on your plate. With a TC, you can take a portion of those activities, a portion of that uh, client communication or document uh, preparation, you know, document signing, um, you know, maybe even scheduling inspections, scheduling signs going up or taken down. There's things you can push onto the plate of your TC. So now you're freeing up more time on yours, right? So the transaction coordinator, it, it's not about, it's not about, well, I can, it only takes me 15 minutes. It only takes me 30 minutes to do. I'm just going to do it myself. It's not about that. It's training yourself to be a business owner and not a solo job owner. Okay. So when you, when you make that TC hire, now you have a team, you have an assistant, you, whatever you call them, your assistant, your team member, um, they now, now there's stuff that someone else is doing. You, you know, it's getting done, even though you may be sleeping, you may be playing with your kids. You may be servicing other clients. Maybe you're recording videos for some marketing within your business, but someone else has those tasks. Then maybe you outsource uh, videography or editing or some marketing, you know, social media marketing, something like that. So now you've pushed even more off of your plate. Then maybe you get so busy because you have other people doing some stuff that you get to the point where you, you have the ability to service so many clients right? You're doing so much marketing and you're bringing in so many, uh, so many clients that now you could take some clients, some actual business off your plate and give it to another agent, right? Then you get to the point where you have a buyer's agent, a showing agent, maybe even a listing specialist when you get big enough. This is how you build a business around what you're already doing by having a team of people responsible to do the activities. So it's not all on your shoulders. This gives you freedom. This gives you flexibility. This gives you the ability to do so much more and to help so many more people. I can't tell you how many agents I talk to that on a regular basis, uh, they, they, I'm like, well, what got you into real estate? I just, I just want to help people. I get it. I also want to help people. It's also a bullshit answer, right? That's fine. But if you really wanted to help people, then you'd build a business so you can help rather than 50, you could help 500, right? If you have a business and if you have a team, if you have a bunch of people who all have their own roles and responsibilities and your, your roles and responsibilities are, are the small portion here, you can service so many more people, right? If it's all on your shoulders, maybe you can sell 20, 30, 50. Maybe if you're one of the best out there, you're selling 100 homes a year all by your damn self. Well, isn't that kind of selfish, right? Isn't that kind of selfish? If, if you say you love helping people, 
then why aren't you putting a business together that lets you serve 10 times more of those people? Something to think about. It also gives you flexibility. So back in December of 2021, my, my dad got very sick. Uh, he was going through um, he was going through radiation. He had he had prostate cancer. He had actually just beaten prostate cancer uh, about a year prior, and he you know he had some regular tests, some follow up tests, and everything. And in those follow ups, holy shit, it's hailing on my office window as if the thunder wasn't distracting enough. This is fantastic. So he was having these follow up tests done, and um, his PSA levels went up a little bit, showing that hey, that there might be a prostate issue again, and so. Uh, out of an abundance of caution, they, they put my dad back on radiation. Well, the radiation absolutely kicked his ass. It weakened him to the point where he ended up getting sepsis. He, he had a bunch of his organs failed and it just, he ended up passing away uh, in December of 2021 in the VA hospital. And I was with him for a few days prior. And, and then all the, 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 if you've ever lost a loved one, you know, all the shit that you have to do after the fact, right? Uh, just all the dealing with burial or cremation, um, dealing with communication, bank accounts, wills, like just all the stuff, communications and planning a funeral. It's a lot, not to mention you want to be there for your family members. And so during this period of time, I remember afterwards, actually, like, well, it was the, it was the night that, um, my dad actually passed away. I was in the waiting room. I was actually sleeping because he was back in his room. Um, this was during COVID. So they were all still freaking weird and, you know, just ridiculous rules and everything. And um, when I remember thinking, holy crap, like I'm not worried right now about following up with this client. I'm not worried about uh, showing homes tomorrow. I'm not worried about opening a door for this person or making sure we get an offer written because a couple of years prior to that, I had chosen to build a real estate business. So my, I don't have a traditional sales team. I have my, I have a referral network. So I have a, a group of referral agents and then a revenue share organization within my brokerage. And that's what makes up my business. So I'm not out there servicing clients on a regular basis because I made that choice because I wanted the lifestyle of freedom. Once I was in the position where my dad was literally dying, I could be present. I was there to comfort my brother. I was there to comfort my wife and my kids and, and everybody else in the family because I had made a decision a couple of years prior to build a business and to take certain responsibilities off my plate so that I could buy my time back. And, and I was sitting there. I was so grateful for that. But then I, I was also like, there was a point in my life where I didn't have a business where I was an employee, right? It, even earlier in my real estate career, I didn't have a real estate business. I would have been sitting there worried about my dad, worried about my family, trying to, trying to be there and, and be present, but also worried about showings the next day or, Oh, did I follow up with that person? Oh crap. What about the appraisal? What about the inspection? And so it made me realize like that. I, because I decided to build a business, I could be present with my family when they needed me the most. I could be present with my dad when he needed me the most. And I can't tell you how powerful that is and how special that is to me. And I knew because of that, I had income coming in, even though I wasn't out there personally showing houses, writing offers and servicing clients. If you've ever been in a situation like that, where you've lost a family member, um, you know how important those last days are and it just sucks. It just sucks if those days are interrupted or tainted by, uh, by work. So hopefully you never, hopefully you're never in that position, but then I mean, let's look at it more leisurely, right? I, I know that I know that's a little down and, and everything, but it's it's real shit. And I know a lot of you have gone through something similar. And unfortunately, some of you will go through something similar after today. So think about that. Do you want to have the flexibility and the freedom to take a week off, to take a month off, and still have income coming in, still have clients being serviced, 
you know, the business is still running or do you want it all to implode? Cause that's what happens, right? If you, if let's say your spouse or one of your kids gets sick and, and God forbid they have to travel to another hospital for treatment or out of state, or, or maybe they, they just need you to, to be there. Or maybe, you know, your spouse loses their job or like all of a sudden you just have so much pressure that if you, if you built a business, if you took, if you started taking the steps today towards a business, towards building something bigger than just you, you could have that peace of mind if you ever need it one day. And outside of that, what if you just want to take time off? What if you decide, you know what? My family's never been to Europe. None of us have ever been to Europe. So damn it, let's take a month off and let's do it. Maybe it's a week, maybe it's two weeks, I don't know. But with the flights and everything, you can't just do it for a week. That's ridiculous. Cause then, you, then you'd really only have like, what, three days, four days there. So no, you need, you need a couple weeks at least in Europe. Well, wouldn't it be nice to know that by taking that special two weeks or a month with your family in Europe, that it doesn't absolutely crush your income, that it doesn't crush your livelihood? Because it does for most agents. Especially, you know, the joke that if you ever want to get busy, go on vacation. If you ever want leads to come in, if you ever, if you ever want your phone to ring, go out of town because it, that's what happens. As soon as you go out of town, everybody wants you build a business because you can, right? This is not rocket science. There's so many different ways to do it. The way I've built my business is different than the way you may build yours. There's, there's traditional sales teams. There's there's referral networks, there's revenue share, there's, um, there's other streams of income that you can have as an agent, right? You can, there's agents who build really prolific websites with a huge local presence. And then you sell a bunch of ad space and sponsorship and have affiliate relationships on your local website. And so your website, for example, or your social media or your YouTube could be generating a ton of recurring revenue outside of transactions. See, there's so many different ways to build a business. And I'm passionate about bringing those ways to you. In fact, I'm working on uh, the relaunch of the Massive Agent Society. It, there's gonna be a 12 week business accelerator where I'm gonna show you, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to go from where you're at now to building the business that lets you have the lifestyle you want. And it's not one size fits all. There are so many different ways you can do it. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you how to figure it out. We're gonna walk through it over a 12 week process. So stay tuned for that. That's coming probably late September, uh, this, this new business accelerator. And it's going to be the best, most powerful thing I've ever released to the industry ever, including this podcast, in my opinion. So I challenge you if, you, if you are operating as a solo agent, wearing all the hats, understand that that's okay. But if you, if you want a business, right, if you want the flexibility, if you want freedom, if you want the ability to help 10 times more people than you can yourself, because spoiler alert, there's only 24 hours in your day. If you hire someone else, now you have another 24 hours. You hire 10 people, you have 240 hours, right? So by building a business, you can do so much more. You can accomplish so much more in the same amount of time. You can help so much more, so many more people, and you can make so much more money and spend less of your time doing it. So if you want that, decide today that you want a business, that you're gonna start taking steps towards that. Even if you don't know what the hell the first step is, I promise you, well, the first step is to get a TC. The first step is a transaction coordinator uh, because it gives you a taste, right? It takes, you can do so much more with a transaction coordinator. I think agents are foolish if you don't have a TC. The first step maybe is just opening your mind into what's possible, right? Maybe you don't know exactly what those steps are yet because, well, the business accelerator hasn't dropped yet. And you're just like, well, what do I do? Well, you learn, right? You, you learn how others are doing it. You see what's possible. And then you start to piece together, like you think about the lifestyle you want, and then you reverse engineer how to make it, how to get it. Start with the lifestyle and reverse engineer it. Start with the income that that makes the lifestyle possible and reverse engineer that, right? That is probably your first step is to start wrapping your head around it. But even before that is to make a decision that you want to build something bigger than just you. It's possible. 
if I can do it, I promise you can. I promise you can. It doesn't matter how long you've been in real estate. It doesn't matter how many homes you've sold. It doesn't matter the grades you got in high school or, or whether you went to college or not. It, none of that bullshit matters. The only thing that matters is, are you going to decide to build a business or continue owning your own job? Whatever you decide is fine, but live with it. And don't delude yourself into, well, you know, I'm totally fine with, with just being a solo agent and wearing all the hats. Well, are you really? Or are you just saying that because it's comfortable? I can't answer that for you. Only you can. I told you in the beginning, my job today was to challenge you and to push back and make you think and reconsider the path you're on. And hopefully we've done that today. I want for you, I want freedom for you. I want flexibility for you. I want the ability for you to have the lifestyle you want so you can watch your kids grow up. One, one of the things that got me to really, when I first made the decision that I was going to build a business, I didn't know how the hell to do it. But something happened, something specific happened that I never wanted to happen again. And I decided I need to find a way to make sure this never happens again. I was Mr. Solo agent, man. I did have a TC at the time, but I was, I was driving across town, stuck in traffic. No, this was, I think this was before I had a TC. Actually, I'm not hundred, hundred percent sure. Whatever, whether I had one or, or didn't it's kind of irrelevant to, uh, to the story, but I was, I was on the other side of town. This was like 5 30, 5 45 PM, just absolute shit traffic. Right. And I was stuck in traffic. We we're going from one house to the next. And uh, we had we had a family dinner planned. And we were going to have family over. And uh, I knew I had to be home by a certain time. And I'm like, all right, I just got to get these showings done. And in the back of my mind, I was like, well, if they make an offer, like, that's great. But shit, that's going to take another, what, hour or so. And, uh, and sure enough, these buyers, we saw a house. They wanted to make an offer. So I called my wife. And I'm like, I'm like, babe, good news. Yeah, good good news. Um, they want to make an offer. And I'm like, and she's like, oh, that's great. And I was like, yeah, but I'm going to be an extra hour. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be there for dinner. And she was obviously upset, but she understood because my wife is a saint. But just hearing that in her voice and then knowing that I just hated the way that made me feel that I didn't have, I didn't want that to be the rest of my career. And so I just filed that away. I was like, I, this sucks. I need to figure out how to, I need to figure out how to make this not happen again. I filed it away. And what really pushed me on the path towards, I am building a business. I have no freaking idea how to do it, but I'm going to, I'm going to find, I'm going to find out. I'm going to find others who have done it and I'm going to figure this shit out was when my wife, I was out showing houses. I think it was on a Saturday. I was out showing houses during the day on a Saturday. Traffic wasn't too bad. Uh, but I was showing houses. My wife texts me. I think, I think our son just, um, just said his first word. And I remember, I feel like I got punched in the gut. I felt like I got punched in the gut. And I, I, I said, Oh, that's great, babe. Um, you know, what did he say? And I don't even remember hearing the answer because I just, all I felt was I, I will not miss his first steps. Uh, I'm not going to be this dad. I'm not going to be this father that misses his son growing up. I didn't have my daughter yet at that time. I'm not, it's not happening. So out of necessity and out of how I felt at that moment, punched in the gut, honestly feeling like a shitty dad in hindsight. I know I wasn't, I was doing, I was doing the best I could, but I knew that I refused to let that happen again. And that decision right then and there was everything. It, it took that moment for me to realize how important it is that I figure out how to build a version of a business in this industry. I wasn't going to leave real estate. 
And I'm not suggesting any of you do either. This is an incredible industry. There's so much upside. There's so many different ways you can build a business. There's so many different ways you can structure it. There's so many different paths you can choose because some of you may want to still show houses for the rest of your life because you enjoy it. Great. Let's build a business around that so that you can just focus on that when you want to, but then have options and flexibility. The decision you make is everything. And I hope some of you have made that today. And I hope it doesn't take the death of a loved one, the sickness of a loved one, um, missing your kids growing up, some financial issue, a tax issue. I, I hope it doesn't take something like that to get you to that point. It might, but you have the chance right now to make a decision that you're going to build a business. If you have any desire to build a business at all, I highly recommend that October 9th and 10th, you're in Salt Lake City, that you come to our Ignite Team Builder Summit, where we still have some tickets available. Even if you have no idea what to do, you're going to, you're going to be in a room full of others that already have businesses. Some of them run giant teams of over 100 agents. Some of them have businesses like me. Some of them don't have a team, but they just have a, a robust referral network. And there's all sorts of different things you can do, right? Neil Dingra is speaking. He's, he's a mortgage guy. He's built a mortgage team and now a media team and now an education company. So his looks different, but they all, they all know how to diagnose where to go from where you're at. Someone in the room is just a few steps ahead of you and you can sit next to them and learn from them. IgniteSLC.com. If you don't have tickets yet, get to Salt Lake City, October 9th and 10th. That is why I'm doing this event for people like you. I will see you there. And if I don't see you there, I hope you've made your decision and you start taking steps forward. As soon as I know the, the I will let you know well ahead of time when the new 12 week business accelerator is coming right now, we're working on what's what content will be in it and recording it and putting it in the right platform. And we're putting it all together. But uh, I believe by the end of September, we'll be ready to rock. And um, for you guys that are like, yes, how do I build a business? What should I do? What are my options? You know, who's going to hold my hand through it? This business accelerator is exactly what you need. And that's why I'm building it for people in your position. Because when I was in that position, I didn't know shit. And I stumbled along for far too long. I wish I had the cheat code. I wish I had the blueprint. That's why I'm going to build it for you. Thank you for listening. I hope this touched you. I hope this episode is meaningful to you. Please share it with your friends, your broker, your team members, anyone that you're connected with in real estate, put it in your stories, post it in a Facebook group. If you feel like this episode was valuable and impactful to you, please don't keep it from others. Share it with others so that they can move their lives and their careers forward as well. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next week.